such a cool way like we've kind of <laughs> can we cut to him get him yes he wants to move Woo! great made a friend what's up it's Keanu Lede and I'm riding with that grape juice Day has been incredible. Did my first magazine cover shoot today. Mm -hmm. um, got in um, this morning, like two hours before that. Slept for two hours. It's been a great day. And I can't tell if it's just because I'm delirious or not. <laughs> so my journey has been kind of interesting. It started when I was super young. Um, I grew up loving music, always um, being a part of music and, and trying to do my part in music. Um, I went to art school and grew up playing guitar, piano, violin, um, and was in performing arts groups my entire life. And then um, I, was, I was raised in Phoenix, Arizona. I should have noted that. And there's nothing to do with Phoenix, Arizona when it comes to performing arts besides like musical theater and community stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I was around 15, um, I signed to my first label deal at RCA Records, um, was dropped, and it was just really hard for me to start over. and. It gave me an opportunity to figure out exactly what I wanted to do and who I also wanted to be as a person, not only as an artist. Um, so I took two, I took six months pretty much off of music because I was depressed as fuck. Sorry, I don't know if I can cuss, but I was. Great. I was depressed as fuck. Um, trying to figure out who I wanted to be in life. And once I figured that out, I started, you know, surrounding myself with amazing people and was on a roll to figure out who I was as an artist and as a person. Now, um, I'm signed to Republic and having the best time of my life because I'm able to be me. Some of my main influences would be Alicia Keys. Um, I used to do nothing but sit at home and play my piano and Alicia was a really big role model for me in my life. Um, Usher. Who else did I love? John Mayer. Um, Sarah Bareilles, Natasha Bedingfield, Brandy. I could go on and on and on. It's a very eclectic mix. It is. It is, but like I said, there was nothing to do in Phoenix, so I had a lot of time to develop a taste for every kind of music because I had so much time to listen to all different types of music. For sure. And speaking of music, you've been putting a lot of quality music out in the atmosphere uh, by way of your EPs, and it's kind of really built into this awesome moment with the song X mm. which now has 40 million listens on Spotify uh, it went top 10 on the R&B charts as mm. well and it really introduced you to a completely different audience a global audience if you will yeah. um, how has life changed since the release of that song? oh my god life has changed so it's actually not changed that much the only reason it's changed so much is that I'm doing the same shit but just way more I'm just way more busy, um, which I love. Like I've I've always wanted to do this my entire life, so I just feel a lot more lucky and really grateful to be doing everything that I love, but at a faster pace. Oh man, BET was so amazing. Um, I have always wanted to perform with all of those people that were in the room that day, so to be able to perform in front of them was an insane experience. Um, I definitely cried right after I got off the stage because it was just a, such a big moment for me. Um, I was really, really fucking nervous. And I remember before going on stage, just saying, everybody's drunk. That's the only way I can get myself to not be nervous at this point. Um, there was one other time that I had something similar to that, but it was more of an even, even more closed audience. Um, and the only way I could get through it was saying that everybody was drunk, so I've been doing that ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I am working on a debut album. Um, I'm trying to figure out what exactly I'm going to do next because I have so many songs um, that I want to release. It's hard because I'm doing so much growth right now as a person, and I feel like 
the world kind of gets to see a a they get to see my growth but at a slower pace it's like just kind of late um so i just keep writing and keep building up songs and then i'll figure out exactly what i'm going to do then but the album is going to be more like myself and selfless but kind of you know in between and a whole new a whole new feeling of independence for sure who have you been working with <laughs> at least some producers okay i'll tell you some producers um boston who did uh bouncing and heavy um oak uh archer um who else og parker um yeah those are just some so i can see that you're being coy about collaboration <laughs> um let's kind of pivot on that question a little bit who are some of your dream collaborations Mm, some of my dream collaborations, Drake, uh, Cardi B, mm, Beyonce, Rihanna, duh. That's a really cool list. Yeah, that's a good list, right? <laughs> Let's put it out in the air. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, I think my goal has always been pretty consistent and the same. It's just to um, help other young people, especially young brown and black women, relate and feel like somebody hears them. Mm -hmm. um, I know that music has always been something that I've gone to to help me through my own situations and my own problems, um, or even celebrate my own happinesses and, and successes. So um, I just want to be that person for people, that's all. I hear that and I think you already are on that trajectory as well because you say that music has always been a form of expression for you and sharing your truth mm. uh, I listen to songs like Show Love mm. which I heard for the first time in a car ride like this a couple of months <laughs> ago in America um, and X as well which sees you really share your truth um, have you had any feedback from some of the people that you've sung about or wrote, written about yeah I've had I've had feedback from some people that I've wrote about but it's always positive like there's no hard feelings. Everybody that I've been with or or my friends that I'm no longer friends with that I've written about or whatever, like everybody's always really supportive. The worst advice? Oh, I know what the worst advice was. I have a story for you. So there was one time where I walked into a session and I played this producer, I'm not gonna name my music. And he sat there and looked at me and, and goes, song sounds angry your songs sound angry men aren't gonna like your music I said my music isn't fucking made for men so they can go fuck themselves <laughs> <laughs> and he was in shock and he was like I'm just saying you sound angry now I said I'm not angry I'm just passionate and I walked out of the session and that was the end of the session, and that was the end of the session. Wow. so that's probably the worst advice he could have given me was like change my music style because men won't like it my, men is not, my music is not for fucking men okay <laughs> they can listen to it or they don't mm -hmm. not my problem um, and the best advice I was ever given ooh. let me just keep going I've been told that so many times, but it's so true. Like the persistence and the drive and the passion for music that I have is the only reason I'm still here making music. If I didn't love music, I wouldn't be doing this because this is a hard job to do. And I'm so grateful and so lucky that I get to do what I love every day, but it is fucking hard and it's a 24 seven job. Um, but there have been so many times that so cliche, but there have been so many times that I've been told no, or I've had to work 10 times harder than the next person because I'm a brown slash black woman. Um, but I'm so grateful for those experiences and those times and, and I am here now because of those times. So I would say just keep going, keep being persistent and stick to it because if you love it, then somebody else is gonna love it too. And that's great advice for people that are looking at you wanting to break into the industry as well. Mm. For sure. And we're kind of pulling up to our destination super soon. So mm. we're gonna play a quick game. You like games? Um, duh. Duh. <laughs> cool, so I'm gonna give you two names and you tell me which you prefer and why. Okay. Okay, and the topics are as random oh God. as the London weather, right? Okay. So, last movie you watch. Dream Girls. I cried. <laughs> One dish you can't do without. 
Mm, the malice. What's that? What's that? You said the malice. The malice. Like, it's like in a corn husk. It's like cornmeal and like meat inside of it. I don't think we have that over here. What? Really? It's Mexican food. Okay. Oh, it's so good. A TV show that you cannot live without. <gasps> Love Island. UK or US? UK, for sure. The US version's trash. Sorry. <laughs> so, that opens up a whole other <laughs> chapter of conversation. I know. Uh, who was your favorite this year? So, I'm not finished yet. I'm okay. on episode 32 okay. as we speak. Um, I really love Molly and Tommy. I do. But I love Amber as a person. Okay. Do you know who's one? Great. No. I already know that Molly and Tommy come second because somebody ruined it for me today. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know who's first. Which is cool. It yeah. The intrigue going. That's great. If you could make a super group, who would be in it and why? A super group? Mm -hmm. I mean, Cardi B would definitely be in it because she's just entertaining as fuck. Mm -hmm. Um, it would have to be all female. Let's say. Let's see. Cardi, I'm included, right? Great. Me. Um. Hmm. Michelle Obama. In a super group. Yeah. In a super group. <laughs> Jasmine. It's because she's Jasmine, duh. <laughs> and let's have one more person. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should have a real superhero. Let's add. Um, let's add Wonder Woman. Very, very interesting mix. Um, finally, what's the ultimate goal for Keanu today? Mm. The ultimate Whoa. To play on that thing. What the fuck is that? It's like, it looks like American Ninja. <laughs> you know that show, American Ninja? Oh my god. It's amazing. It's such an amazing show. It's like, it has obstacle courses and stuff. Um, okay. My ultimate goal. is probably just to have a long-term effect on people's lives in a positive way and whether that is how they act on a day-to-day -day basis or the things that they question the things that they are curious about um, or the way that they think about themselves or other people be able to affect people in a positive way. Kiana the day, thank you very much. Thank you. Cool.